Chancellor Daniel Malloy, um, a former prosecutor, lawyer, mayor, and two-term governor of Connecticut, Chancellor Daniel P. Malloy brings 22 years of public service leadership and leadership to the University of Maine system. Chancellor Malloy is leading the University of Maine system's efforts to unify Maine public universities and collaborative service to the students and people of Maine through the innovation of a first in the nation statewide unified accreditation from the New England Commission on Higher Education. With unified accreditation, the universities that make up the University of Maine system are now evaluated together based on how well they share state resources and academic programs in meeting accreditation standards for institutional quality and higher education effectiveness. Chancellor Malloy is the former Rappaport Distinguished Visiting Professor at Boston College Law School and taught undergraduate political political science for 15 semesters as an adjunct professor at the University of Connecticut. He holds a BA in political science and sociology from Boston College, a JD from Boston College Law School, and six honorary degrees. In 2016, Chancellor Malloy was honored as the John F. Kennedy Profile and Courage Award. He was also recognized for defending the U.S. resettlement of Syrian refugees amid security concerns following the 2015 attacks in Paris. Putting his principles into action, Malloy personally welcomed a family of Syrian refugees to New Haven, Connecticut. Other profiles and Courage Award recipients included U.S. Presidents Barack Obama, George H.W. Bush, and Gerald Ford. So please join me in welcoming Chancellor Malloy. Thank you. It's a great honor to, to be with you, and I will talk about uh, unified accreditation as I was requested to do, but let me say a few things uh, picking up on the conversation that we've already had. Yesterday, uh, in an earlier session, uh, we talked about, someone talked about a program that we began uh, at the University of Maine system uh, several years ago, uh, which was designed for freshmen, uh, basically to give them a free takeover for a course uh, if they failed a course uh, in their freshman year. Um, uh, by the way, that, that uh, uh, was instituted in literally overnight, uh, probably in about a two week period of time. Um, and we saw, uh, and, and, and the other way I would explain this, imagine uh, you are a first generation uh, student, uh, your parents really didn't want you to go to college, uh, you went to college at one of our universities and you failed a course and then you had to go home at Christmas time and explain that to your family. What we knew is that we lost a large percentage of those students by the next September. Some of them we lost by January. Uh, what we instituted uh, literally overnight was uh, uh, this process of rewarding uh, the endeavor uh, as opposed to the grade uh, and allowing the student to have a free takeover course uh, to make up for that. That led uh, us to see about a six or seven, per six percent increase in the retention of those students, which led to a two percent increase overall uh, in, in our success rate for that given year. One, one little thing. Now imagine if we own failures, as opposed to students own failures. Now. I'm, I'm not talking about students who don't show up or don't give an effort or don't, uh, uh, aren't participating or, uh, or, don't, or don't tune in. Uh, but imagine if we owned failures uh, and what that might do to lowering cost, uh, to encouraging students to participate, to, to try harder, to try again. Um, food for thought is what I thought I would uh, uh, leave you with uh, on that particular point. And then finally, not in my uh, description, which uh, uh, thank you very much for the uh, very generous introduction, but one of the things that you need to understand about me is this is, uh, and it is for all of you, it's a calling. Uh, I was not an academic uh, from the beginning of my career, but at the beginning of my life, I was born with severe physical disabilities and learning disabilities, and was thought to be mentally retarded as that term was used uh, as late as fourth grade. Uh, the reality is I had a combination of physical and uh, uh, processing disorders that, that led most people to think that I would not be successful. Some people still think that. Um, <laughs> uh, but, but the reality is I had a mother uh, who said to me every single day that we shared the earth together, uh, Dan, you have an obligation to leave the world a better place for your having lived in it every day. 
I, I tell this story, and it's a true one. My mother used to drive me to nursing homes when I was a kid and tell me to get out of the car and go visit people and brighten their day. Uh, what I've tried to do for throughout my adult life is to uh, make this world a better place, piece by piece, action by action, direction by direction. Uh, and quite frankly, this is kind of a capstone project for me. It's my fifth career uh, as I count them. Uh, and doing a good job by way of our students and their futures are very important matters to me. Uh, with that, I'll get into unified accreditation. Try to speed it along and take some questions if there are any. Uh, uh, my, our primary accreditor, Nechi, is represented in the room. If I say anything that offends you, please forget it. <laughs> Short memory. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I, we decided to put a, a couple of things together, uh, slides. We could probably make these available to, to folks if you want. And we also have websites that you can go to to study uh, on this. Uh, uh, as I mentioned in yesterday's uh, uh, preliminary uh, uh, round robin, uh, this has been a work in progress really going back 51 years ago, although, although the board, our board of trustees only authorized seeking unified accreditation back in 1986, it was what drove in many ways the foundation or the formation of the system of uh, Maine universities uh, 51 years ago. Um, uh, and a lot of wonderful work had been done by other uh, uh, individuals, including individuals who are in this room who pre predate my joining um, the system but it had not gotten uh, over uh, the finish line um, and, and quite frankly was not particularly well understood by the population of faculty, staff, and students um, that we were trying to move in this direction uh, when I uh, arrived. Uh, but we do, I do want to say that Nechi, our primary uh, regional accreditor, and I say that because so many other programs are accredited by other organizations within uh, uh, our institutions, and so not to offend them, I say primary. If, if, I, if that's offensive, you forgot it already. <laughs> um, uh, what, what, we, uh, what we did want to, uh, what, I, what I would also say is we were moving in this direction even though the legislature had said and dictated that there would be universities, they'd have a particular name and they'd be in, in, in particular communities. Um, uh, and I want to be very clear, we look at unified accreditation as a tool. Uh, a tool to improve the experience uh, and the success rates of our students. Uh, that's really what it's about. It also allows us uh, to uh, face uh, and work around, quite frankly, our demographic challenge. I went from the seventh oldest state in the nation in Connecticut to the oldest state in the nation uh, in Maine. Uh, and our demographics are very challenging. Uh, and quite frankly, it's not a wealthy state. Um, and. Uh, um, uh, so uh, it, it is a tool to help us around some of those issues um, as well. Um, and, uh, and then I've, and the, the next paragraph just says some of the things we can do and are already doing uh, with respect to things like nursing or our, our GIS folks getting together and uh, creating on a multi-campus basis a minor. I'm sure it will lead to a major. I'm sure it will lead to other degree uh, offerings uh, in the not too distant future. And the ability to do that on a cross-pollination, cross-university uh, or campus uh, structure is very, very important, I think, to our, our future. Next slide. Um, unified Accreditation Guiding Principles. First document we published. First of all, I should say this. Uh, I asked uh, the folks, uh, uh, Chief Counsel Jim Thalen, who's here with us, to go back over the last 40 years and find every document that had ever talked about a unified accreditation or something like that. And we put it up on a website so that we had full disclosure, full discussion about what had transpired before, including the use of the term one university, which I addressed yesterday. I basically said stop using that concept. What we want is unified accreditation and we want to create an environment where our universities can work together. Um, uh, these, uh, this document was very important to allowing folks to understand for the first time really what we were trying to do and what we were not trying to do. We were not trying to end the office of president uh, or provost where we had those positions. We were not trying to put everyone's, uh, every single function into a single pot. 
Uh, we wanted to track uh, success and data uh, on, a, on a campus or university uh, uh, basis. We wanted transparency. And that was the first document and the document that I remind people of every single day when they ask a question, particularly from faculty, about what it is we're trying to do. Next, please. A unified accreditation, uh, why? Uh, student completion, uh, course availability, small university. We have universities that have fewer than 1,000 students. Uh, it is not uncommon for a course to be offered uh, every other or in some cases every third semester. Think about that. So if you missed a course, your graduation could be held up for as long as a year. And by the way, in one small audience at Machias, uh, which is one of our campuses, the Board of Visitors were there. There were about six people in the room. I asked the Board of Visitors for that university um, if they or any family member or someone they knew had had a delayed graduation because the courses weren't offered more frequently. Out of six, three people raised their hands. Two of them uh, were the, the Board of Visitors themselves. One uh, was a Board of Visitor whose daughter was in the Coast Guard taking courses and couldn't complete her degree. Think about what that uh, does and the additional cost and the delayed uh, 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 work that might otherwise be undertaken in areas like nursing or uh, our teaching or other fields. Um, improving student access and mobility, uh, a faculty opportunity to work together on this particular research function. We have a research university. It's the U University of Maine. Has uh, all of the supports built into that university to support that uh, uh, now R2, soon to be R1 status. Uh, we're making those available now across all of our universities. Uh, something that we might not have been able to do previously, uh, but for our, our uh, current status. Uh, resource sharing, um, uh, uh, again, I think is made easier. Uh, Nechi had appropriately raised some concerns about things that we were doing on a cross-border basis and said we had to come into compliance and make sure that every university was meeting all the standards. This was a way to, to do that. Um, uh, again, I think that uh, um, I think that speaks for itself, and I'll take questions if there are more. Let's go to the next slide. Unified accreditation, next steps. Uh, we will complete a self-study next summer. Uh, um, uh, 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 in advance, we are uh, preparing our comprehensive uh, evaluation, um, uh, our document. Uh, that's being participated and driven just the way it always is. Uh, all of our universities are represented in the eff uh, effort. All of our faculty uh, is represented in, uh, in the effort. The evaluation process and its outcomes will inform the development and implementation uh, and, our, uh, uh, and will also coincide with the completion of our strategic plan, uh, which has not uh, been undertaken in a traditional sense since 2004. So we're going down uh, finalizing and pr making permanent uh, our status uh, and also a new strategic plan. Is that it? So uh, that's a, a very quick um, a version of what we're trying to do. What do we want to do? We want to make sure that more of our students can get the very best of each of our universities. We want, uh, what do we want to do? We want to make sure that no student is denied a timely graduation because their smaller university couldn't meet a particular need. What do we want to do? We want to drive success, uh, which I will, will agree absolutely means attainment of degrees uh, um, for our, our, or credentials for our institutions. Um, and we are, uh, uh, and we do have a, a great partnership, as you heard yesterday, with our community college uh, organization as well. Um, this is a different way to think about um, what other people have decided to do elsewhere, which are mergers or consolidations. Uh, this is bringing everybody under one house, allowing us to do things which uh, uh, electronically uh, 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 we, can already, we can already do, we just needed to make uh, it fit. Uh, and to guarantee that we're meeting all the standards uh, that NETGE required of us to do those nine uh, standards uh, previously referenced in earlier uh, uh, presentations. That's kind of a, um, a, by the way, I should tell you a couple of other quick stories about that. So um, I, I came to the uh, uh, university system two and a half years ago 
Uh, I was warned that the uh, time frame that, that Netchi and others had laid out uh, for uh, getting this done um, were too short uh, and that uh, we should actually extend that by two and a half years, two, two, two and a half years. Um, um, and uh, what I quickly did is devise a way to get it done in six months, um, uh, 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 preparatory to at least the meeting that uh, uh, would be held by Netchi on, on the particular subject matter. Uh, in the first semester, and it, if you remember, and for those who are watching, Maine is the size of uh, Vermont, uh, New Hampshire, uh, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Connecticut combined. Um, and uh, I remember walking into a meeting, uh, Rosa, I think, was at the meeting, I think Jim was at the meeting, and a few other folks, and I said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to visit every campus three times this semester, and we're going to do it next semester as well. I actually reached every campus three to five times in the first semester and three to five times in the second um, semester. And we answered every question in town hall, met with the assemblies, met with the senates, uh, I, I think brought about a higher level of understanding of the need to do what we were trying to do. Now that does not mean that um, we would get 100% support. We don't have 100% percent uh, support. As I, I said yesterday, one of my favorite quotes is everyone, if you survey everyone, everyone wants change. But really what they want is for you to change, not for them or things for them. Uh, but we have a far uh, greater buy-in to what it is we're doing and understanding of what the potential is once you break down those barriers uh, to cooperation uh, than we've ever uh, had before. Uh, and with that, um, I'm doing pretty well time-wise. You have some questions? Larry's going to give me a list. Don't, don't go to him. Go, he's he's going to give me a list of, <laughs> of things that I said that were wrong and offensive. No, okay, go, go to him next. Th this all sounds great. Um, you, you kind of alluded at the end to, you know, not everybody is, o is always going to be thrilled with every development. What would you say are some of the kind of lingering or, or currently um, existing challenges or problems in this process? Well, you know, I, I, again, we're a collection of universities, and each has a different history and a different set of experiences um, and, uh, and, and, and different panic levels about change. Um, and so I think bringing all of those into alignment uh, overnight is an impossibility. Um, faculty has concerns about governance issues, but our principals say governance issues remain the same. Uh, other campuses, well, will we have a president? Well, we've answered that question. You're going to have a president. Uh, at two of our universities, presidents are also provosts, um, um, but, but we have ways, uh, so we, we're maintaining uh, those kinds of systems. Uh, sports are remaining, uh, uh, you know, uh, all of those things that, that people fear are, they're going to miss, I think we've given them an upfront answer that we can refer to time and time and time again, and I think that's been an important part of it. In fact, I think, in, in reality, principal, our principal's document answers all of those questions. It's just that lots of people need to hear them and quite frankly, see execution uh, on that side. I'm sorry, now would you call on Larry? <laughs> I've but caught just, my breath. Um, so you were, you were a system before you unified under accreditation, so I think it's always interesting to hear you talk about what was it about unified accreditation that allows you to do these things that you, you couldn't do before even when you were a system? So what, when we were a system, we, we uh, actually, I'll, I'll say this, and it, and it predates Larry's leadership of, of Netchi. Um, we, we had been told that we had gone too far by Netchi with respect to things that we were doing on a cross-university basis. That, that one of your standards is who's in charge? Who do we hold accountable? Well, if you, uh, if you have a lot of, um, uh, uh, cross-university collaborations, um, uh, the Netchi felt um, that we, we, they did not know who to hold responsible. They didn't know what the governance um, structure um, was. Uh, they weren't necessarily assured uh, that the data that should follow uh, the creation of those kinds of programs would be in place. Um, and so we needed to answer that, that question. I do think it makes us much more efficient, by the way, and I do think it holds us to a higher standard. Does that answer your question? No? Larry, good. Oh, yeah, that's right. 
This is a, he's really important to me. So if you don't, if you just, if you don't I mean, mind, in part, but um, if you maybe it'd be better. Could you give an example of what you've been able to do in terms of, you know, program consolidations or things that you're able to do now that you you, were, you weren't able to do before? So, so let me use, use examples of from the past of programs. Uh, you know. Uh, programs that have gone away over time because there's insufficient interest at any one university or any one place to sustain. The classics. We have a university of 6,000 students who basically lost their offering of the classics. There were more than enough students in total to support that program but they weren't situated at one physical location. And now, and now, and quite frankly, there were decisions made prior to my uh, joining the system on how to handle other things, like an MBA program uh, being offered by multiple universities. Uh, I think we now have a tool that allows us to do things much more cooperatively, that there, in, in situations where there doesn't have to be a loser for there to be a winner. And by the way, the only people who are entitled to win our students. We're all just part of the cog. I have a quick question about, um, so you talked about what was retained, right? That you retained um, a president on each campus, that the cultures were retained, the sports mascots, I presume, um, that sort of thing that people feel really um, uh, wed to. What was actually lost that people feared they would lose? So like, how many jobs were lost? Or like, if you had one chair of a department or that sort of thing. So, and, then, and I have a follow-up, go ahead. So, so let me try to try and answer. First of all, this was not done for money. I wanna be very clear. I think there is money that will be saved mm -hmm. over time as we implement, and quite frankly, as we look at, at using my example of the classics so that, that other things are not lost as well. But it was not done for money. It was done for the benefit of our students facing our financial problems, facing our demographic problems. Um, by the way, you know, you talk about a small university, Fort Kent, I don't know what the population of Fort Kent is, um, but if Fort Kent loses a university in their community, it, it, it is the biggest employer, uh, the most important thing there. It's a, a, a point of, a, 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 of pride. Uh, Presque Isle is the same thing. Farmington is the same thing. That's about less than 2,000 students. So it, it, it allows us, I think, to have a better chance um, uh, and to be successful at keeping all of those institutions where they are and, and doing what they're doing because we can do lots of things together that we couldn't possibly afford to do separately. That's probably my phone, but just if you ignore that, I will too. <laughs> and, and don't tell my wife I said that, all right? Hey, Dan, as a follow-up and to the point about being stronger together, I, I was drawn to the system financial aid unification, yes. and, um, but local packaging. Yes. Can you say more? Because I know there are lots of folks who are considering some back office consolidation and what that looked like in your system for the system level versus the university level. So what I think is going to happen um, is that our smaller universities will look at the larger universities who have a much larger staff of people to, Im to help implement their, their processes and to improve their processes. So, I, so um, right now, just about everybody's doing it on their own. I think that that's an area where we'll, we'll see a lot of uh, uh, cooperation and, and cross-pollinization. Yeah, moving forward. So I, I, I could see, poten I mean, I'm not dictating this result. Any, anybody at home sees this, uh, meaning Maine, uh, sees this. I, I'm not dictating a result, but I wouldn't be surprised that, it, that we probably end up with two processing uh, 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 you know, the University of Southern Maine, perhaps, and the University of Maine um, uh, helping uh, and assisting in that area. Um, one of the other things that I think that we can overcome is this concept that we're, all of our universities are competing. Um, and we've actually had some wins in that regard. This, this year alone, um, w when I inherited the system, systems were still trying to grab students from other, within, you know, main students within our system from one another, even after a student had expressed a desire to go to one place or the other. So we were actually, you know, bidding against one another to get, to get a student. We ended that process. Once a student within our system says, I want to go to Farmington, then other people stop those communications trying to take that student away. So there are some real wins uh, that are being created by the, uh, uh, by the fact that we're working together. 
I will also tell you, uh, this is a terrible thing to say, but COVID has actually brought us closer together um, and, and made us realize uh, that perhaps we could not have done as well as we have done uh, uh, handling the COVID experience, and Maine has done extremely well, um, uh, uh, but for the system. Anybody else? Sure. We have one question from our online um, guest. It's, do students have a single transcript across Maine with the new unified accreditation, and will this help with articulated transfer across the state and county? It will help with articulated transfer. Our concept is uh, that everybody has a home. Um, and uh, uh, our concept is if, if, you, uh, if you're going to do the majority of your work at, uh, at Orono, uh, at the University of Maine, uh, um, our, our largest university, that's your home. It doesn't prevent you from taking a class somewhere else. If you're at our smallest uh, uh, university, Fort Kent, that's your home but it doesn't prevent you from accessing uh, the best professor in the state on a particular subject matter, even though they're at a different sister institution. So uh, our, our inter the way that we want to implement this, um, and I'll say this, is everybody has a home. And that home will reflect uh, where, w which, uh, which name, not your name, but which name is on your degree. Um, uh, but it does not stop uh, uh, you from taking courses. Uh, uh, at, at our other institutions. One of the things that we are actively involved in right now uh, is a unified catalog. We used to call it a common catalog. It's a unified catalog. It allows everyone to see what's being offered when uh, at all of our universities. And quite frankly, that's specifically designed uh, for students who might be out of sequence at their own university with respect to when a course is offered. Uh, but it's also a great tool for students who we might allow to design their own major or minor, and they can help put it together by understanding what's available at other places. Yes. By the way, as the, as it, as the microphone's working its way over there, uh, I, I have now taken to the, um, since I banned the use of one university that we were gonna be one place, um, I, I've, sometimes when people are giving me a real hard time about what we're trying to do, I would say, well, what would you rather have, unified accreditation or one university? Not surprisingly, our lar largest university would like to see that, uh, and our smallest universities quickly come around to supporting unified accreditation. So I wanted to ask, where are you in the process of, of developing the processes that you're just talking about? For example, yes, in your home, you have an individual home, but is it 50% of your classes defined, 50.1%, what those processes that will get people into the weeds as to where is my home and also where do I pay? Where, do, you know, do I, can I, can I do that at any campus? What, and, and what uh, strategy are you using to put that forward? So I think uh, uh, the unified catalog um, uh, fully implemented should answer all of those questions, quite frankly. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, as I, as, I, as I say, you know, if I wanna call China right now, I can do it on my phone in front of you and, and somewhere else they decide how to divvy up the revenue and how to make the connections, right? That's what we need our system to do for students and faculty uh, uh, in, 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 in handling some of the decisions that you were just referenced, referencing. I, I, and I think overall I'd prefer uh, for residential students that, that their home is where they started or where they did the majority of, of their um, uh, coursework. But we can answer all of those questions. Is the offering, what's the, what's the share of the offering institution versus the share of the uh, home institution? We're gonna have to work all of that out. Uh, and we're in, engaged in doing that. And quite frankly, getting to a unified catalog is a, at the same time that we're, we're updating to the tune of millions of dollars, uh, our, uh, our, our student support um, uh, system. So, uh, so all of those things will come into um, fruition over a similar period of time. Uh, so I don't have a complete answer to you, but there's a process underway and tools being built to allow it to happen. Anyone else? Yes. <laughs> I've, I've been cut off in nicer ways than that. <laughs> Does, the, the, the <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. Just one but, 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 but doing it to me is one thing. Doing it to her was really a, really a, a bad, bad move on your part. I just, how long have you been with this organization <laughs> so we can celebrate uh, your existence for a time? Go ahead. Last quick question, Dan. Does your unified accreditation get at the issue that Pam brought up about um, some of the four years not being willing to accept um, the credit, the courses from a two-year college? You know, I, I think our system is, um, I, I think we do a good job, <laughs> this, is, this is one of the interesting things. I think we do a, a, a good job in handling uh, uh, transfers from community college to our universities. We don't treat one another within our system nearly as well. And that's got to change. I, I will tell you a quick story. Uh, you know, I have a, a son who played hockey around the country and would put together a bunch of credits, um, you know, wherever he was playing because he, he left college to play some minor league hockey and that, that sort of stuff. And um, uh, so he had a collection of courses. He finished, put, the, put them all together and, and got his associate's degree at Norwalk Community College. Um, and had to take a science, he took biology. Uh, it was biology with a, I think, a one credit lab versus UConn's requirement of biology with a two credit lab. Same book, same subject matter. W when, when he wanted to go from uh, Nor Norwalk to finish his degree at UConn, they said, well, you're gonna have to take biology over. Right? We're just not smart. In, in helping students be successful. We are, when we do things like that, right, when we end up having students with, with 80 credits for an associate's degree, uh, or 90 credits for associate's degree, what, what, we're burdening people. And, and if we would just get out of the business of burdening, um, that, then we'd be, we'd be far, far better off, and I, I, and I think, are coming together as a system and having a, a great, you know, set of sister institutions in the community colleges, uh, we can move forward. I just want to get to the point where we're treating one another within our system at least as well as we treat our friends from the community college system. Um, the the uh, there is so much that we we can do to make it easier for students uh, to be successful. Um, so I'll leave you with my thought that I entertained earlier. Think about it if we owned the failures.